All right, my friends, we have another new RBH Sound product, a 21 inch sub that has so much output that it made us change our Basaholic room size rating. That's what we're gonna be talking about in today's video. Hey folks, I'm Gene Delasella with Audioholics. We got Shane Rich in the house, bringing some big RBH gear. Why do you have to make a subwoofer for this big, Shane? <laughs> well, Gene, it's all about performance, and that's what you're all about as well. So we thought it would be a match made in heaven. And a lot of this has to do with Don Don because he's always wanting more bass. Yep. He wanted a Donimus level subwoofer. He said, Gene, your system in here kicks butt, but you need infrasonic. And the only way I was gonna get infrasonic in this room, especially because the floors are all hard, they don't resonate like my old house that was all on rafters. Mm -hmm. We needed a subwoofer that could dig deep. And I'm talking about in this room, we've got a 3 dB point of five hertz thanks to this subwoofer, 21 inch carbon fiber driver in a 330 pound enclosure with a four kilowatt external amplification. Why is this thing so heavy? I, I understand the driver is heavy, but why yeah. is this enclosure so heavy? What did you do to make this thing so heavy <laughs> and why did you make it that heavy? Yeah, great question. Um, it all boils down to being able to uh, <laughs> handle the motion of the driver. Uh, so uh, when you're, when you're putting enough power to a large driver like this, it has an inertia that uh, has to be offset by the mass of the cabinet. Otherwise, you're going to get some movement rocking. Of the, and rocking of yeah. the cabinet. So in this case, and this is really where we developed our new proprietary uh, granular acoustic damping system specifically for this subwoofer. Dads, and, right? Yes. And uh, we're now using it also in other speaker systems. But this was where it was initially developed. And this, is, this came about because I knew I needed to add more mass to the enclosure because when I was doing CEA 2010 testing uh, outside and really pushing it hard, it was literally starting to lift the feet. Mm. There was so much uh, you know, power in this motor of the driver that uh, it, we just had to have more mass to make sure it was stable and on the ground all the time. So it's kind of like a Porsche 911. They have to put the little flap up at the at the back to keep the car planted. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It, and then we're talking at the very lowest frequency. So you know, 10 hertz and below kind of thing is really where uh, I was noticing that that was making uh, making a difference, and we needed to have more added mass for the enclosure. So I w I knew we need to add more mass but I didn't want to take away from the volume, the acoustic volume that the driver needed and uh, had this idea that uh, needed to try using uh, the mass loading as an acoustic absorber and uh, was able to do some testing and measurements. And that's what we have here is we have this added mass uh, it's about 120 or so pounds of this granular acoustic absorbing material. And it also functions as an acoustic, like you said, absorber. So it not only adds mass to keep the subwoofer stable, but uh, it acts like, uh, you know, wool or Dacron or fiberglass mm -hmm. or any other typical acoustic absorbing material that you put in an enclosure but it's even more effective than those materials. And it's really inert. When you knock on this cabinet, there's no hollow sound at all. Yeah. And, and I understand that the benefit of that is to keep the cabinet planted, but what did it do to the transient behavior of the sub? Did it actually improve that too? Yeah, so that's what was great about it, is even though I was taking away volume by adding uh, the granular material, uh, about a cubic foot and a half, it didn't change the cue of the system at all, really. And, and so 
It maintains a, a, a Q that's just below 0.7. Again, uh, really good transient response. Um, and yeah, so it's very, very musical, tight, accurate. And uh, you experienced that here. Yeah. And you know, I've seen some of the best 18 inch sealed subwoofers on the market and, mm -hmm. and they sound incredible when you get them coupling in a room. When you measure those anechoically, a lot of those drop off at like 35 hertz, they start rolling off. Mm -hmm. This doesn't roll off at 35 hertz anechoic, right? This goes down a little bit deeper than that. Yeah, well, and of course, like a lot of those subs, uh, we are boosting it at the very lowest frequency. So the uh, natural tuning frequency is about 25 hertz. Some of those 18s you're talking about, that we've checked out, they they tune closer to about 40 hertz and they're being boosted below 40. Right. This is being boosted below 25, but it's got, of course, a much lower uh, resonance frequency and then it um, it just has an incredible excursion and... and yeah, what's the yeah. X max on? It's like 38 millimeters or something? Yeah, yeah, 38 millimeters. Uh, and so it's... Yeah, Go and guys, that's why you can see this has a very large roll surround. Some of the some of the commercial drivers, the big twenty one inch drivers, they have that accordion kind of surround. They don't have the throw of a driver yeah. like this. Yeah, they don't. Not only that, but uh, the characteristics of that type of sound don't lend well to being uh, used in a sealed enclosure. Uh, it, it's just not uh, robust enough. The driver starts uh, excreting, and that pleated type surround will actually fold in on itself and cause non-linearities and problems at high excursions. So your distortion goes way up at the Correct. low frequencies. Yep. Speaking of CEA 2010, can you share some of the measurements? What's, what's the SPL? Do you remember the SPL that you pulled on this when you did the SPL data? Yeah, well, I mean, it, it's definitely you know over 120 uh, at anything above about 25, 30, or sorry, 25, Hertz, I think, uh, that's where it starts to, uh, or maybe it's 20 hertz. It's like about 118 at, at 20 ish, I believe, 117, 118. Uh, and then it's still outputting, I believe, at uh, 12 hertz, it's still outputting over 100 decibels. And, uh, and down below that, uh, 10, I think you're still at 94, 95 dB. And that's why we have the new Basaholic Maximus rating. I'm going to be updating our Basaholic room size rating. This goes beyond our extreme rating. So the SV1212 got our extreme rating. That's with the dual 12 inch drivers. Mm -hmm. This actually has similar output above, you know, 40 or 50 hertz. Mm -hmm but it's below the 25 hertz threshold that this thing really has an output advantage over the dual 12. And that's yes. why we came up with a new category for basaholic rating. And guys, there's something to be said about a sealed system. When you have a sealed system with a lot of power and a lot of linear excursion, the bass is really incredible. It's seismic. And when we added this sub to the system, which already has 12, 12 inch drivers for the bass, it just adds another layer of depth that was, it wasn't like it was lacking before, but now there's a presence and a fill to this room that I've never heard before since we've been, you know, setting the system up for the last two years. And I'm going to be doing a formal review on this. Can you give us a little more detail on the driver? So this cone is carbon fiber. Yeah, it's actually a sandwich. So carbon fiber with a specific type of gel foam in the middle to provide damping because carbon fiber providing the rigidity is just absolutely essential to being able to do a driver like this so that it's not flexing mm -hmm. and folding under a high pressure of long excursion. Uh, but then carbon fiber will naturally ring and so uh, you don't want that. So thus, you know, using the sandwich uh, type of construction so that foam within the sandwich of the carbon fiber helps to damp any of those higher frequency uh, resonances that, that you would otherwise have. 
Right. Now the motor structure on this, I think initially you were going to do a, a ferrite motor structure, but it was yeah. so heavy that it was actually making the frame a little bit unstable during movement and shipping and stuff, right? Yeah. Well, it wasn't the frame so much as it was just the motor structure was so massive that it would shift <laughs> uh, even after being glued up. And so we needed more support. So our manufacturing partner and, and uh with our testing and feedback, was able to put uh, yeah more support, basically bolts through the neodymium motor structure, and it so resolved all of those issues and gave us an even stronger motor force. So neodymium magnets are much stronger and lighter than ferrite magnets. So this fact that this thing has a neodymium motor structure, the driver still weighs almost 70 pounds. Let's put yeah. it in perspective. So this driver is massive because of it, because of the diameter and just the brute force that you need to get those long excursions that you're seeing in this subwoofer. Yeah, exactly. You know, the other thing I think is important to point out is that um, you know, we're talking about CEA 2010 measurements. That's simply just output with a certain distortion level. Yeah. The subwoofer is actually capable of even higher output than those figures uh, with a little more distortion. And uh, honestly, you know, in a theater environment, that's also critical because our ears aren't just listening and, and you know, telling us, oh, we've reached a certain distortion yeah, threshold. Exactly. Yeah. We need, you know, just top end max output capability for a subwoofer like this. Uh, and so that's it's capable of doing that, providing those real large dynamic uh, right. levels. So now there's two configuration options for the subwoofer. You can either have the amplifier inboard in the subwoofer, or you could have external amplification, which is the route we went in this case. The external amplification gives you, what, four kilowatts of power? Yes. And uh -huh. that's if you have 220 volts? Uh, no, no, it's that's at uh, uh, 120, 110, 120. So it actually would be a little higher than that. It's more like 4.5, you know, four and a half kilowatts at, at uh, uh, the 220 so right. if you can hook it up to a 220 you'll get a little more power bottom line guys is if you're putting a sub in like this get a dedicated outlet for it don't use a shared outlet because this subwoofer amplifier is powerful i bench tested it and i'll share some of my results in the review so you have a passive version and a powered version what's the msrp of this subwoofer yeah well so it's not passive and powered they're they're I mean, outboard powered. Yeah. They're all powered. Yeah. But uh, MSRP is right around the, the 10, 10K figure. Yeah. So, so that's with the amp built in or the, or is there? Yeah. E either way. Either way. Either okay. way. It's re they're, they're not that much different. Yeah. Uh, but this is a unique product. This was made specifically to match up with our SV reference TRS, speaker yeah. system that's in here, the SVTRSs. And, and just provide even more infrasonic. Those are already, you know, good to a 3 dB down point of what, like 16, 15 yeah, hertz or something Yeah, in the room like we that. have about 17 hertz or so. Yeah, yeah 16, 17 hertz. Um, yeah. And, and so this is really providing um, a little more overall output throughout the rest of the system. It integrated, as you know, incredibly well. I'm sure you show a measurement of that, how yeah. it integrated. And then it's providing you know, another 10 plus dB below the 20 hertz region. Serious output, guys. In fact, my wife was hearing the whole house shake from the other room. So all the sound isolation I did in this room goes to nothing when you have a sub like this with these long wavelengths being amplified, <laughs> unfortunately. Yeah, be prepared And, and your that. neighbors are not going to like this. So just be aware of that, that this is some serious low infrasonic subwoofer output, and your neighbors are probably going to complain. You might not want to play this at 4 in the morning like we, <laughs> yeah. like we were doing. Be a little more careful. But the other thing but we certainly ought to mention is how it changed the overall quality mm -hmm. of the sound. You know, it was really interesting how it seemed to just – Everything was tightened up and just a little more dynamic, of course, but uh, it, it was great to see how it ended. Yeah, you know, the, the misconception is you have a big driver, it's going to be slow or sloppy. That's not the case here. I mean, the group delay is extremely low on this driver. Yes. You yeah. designed this driver to have low inductance, right? Mm -hmm. So it's, and it's not a like massive cone. 
Yeah. It's not a heavy Very cone. cone. It's not like yeah. a car subwoofer. Oh, yeah. So if you had two of these subs in a system with just a, a very capable uh, tower that was crossed over, you're talking about extremely musical bass, but also the ability to just do seismic activity if you're watching a movie like Ready Player One, we watched that Kong scene. Yep. And everything was just rumbling, and it was deep, and it was tight. I never, I never even localized the sub, and it's pretty close to our listening area. And we have a crossed over like 90 or 100 hertz with a very high steep crossover, uh -huh. and we still couldn't localize where the bass was coming from. Right. So that shows you that there's not a lot of resonance in the cabinet, and that the the driver is just so controlled it's not producing harmonic nasties. Right. Exactly. Yeah, we've used it, uh, coupled it with much smaller speakers, and. It's just phenomenal in terms of how it matches up because it can play up to that. It has a rated 80 hertz crossover point, but it can be pushed even beyond that. You just have to be a little more careful. Like you said, use a steeper filter, which we do do that for that uh, yeah. low pass crossover because the larger the driver gets it beams more. It, yeah, exactly. The lower the frequency at which it starts beaming. Yeah. Yeah, and guys, if you don't want to see the driver, this it comes with a magnetic reel, and I'll show you that in the B-roll. Personally, it just looks badass when you walk into the room and you see this big 21-inch driver. <laughs> and you know, another thing to point out is this speaker, along with your new towers that we, we, we just did a video on, all of these are being made in Utah. They're being made locally. The cabinetry is being made in America. This is not China anymore. You guys yep. shifted your production here. That's correct. Yep. Everything is made in Layton, Utah. And what's the warranty on the on the subwoofer driver and the amplifier? So uh, five years on the subwoofer itself, three years on the amplifier. Awesome. So, yeah. Uh, but uh, we expect there would be no problems. Uh, this thing just can handle so much power. Uh, yeah, the driver can the handle over four kilowatts. Yeah, easy, driver right? handles over four kilowatts. Uh, having that neodymium motor structure, as you've seen, it keeps it really open, incredible cooling, and uh, and then the amplifier is just really robust. This is the new benchmark in subwoofers, guys. You're going to be seeing more coverage of this. I'm going to do a formal review. We're going to have Don Dunn over here give his impressions because, you know, nobody loves bass like Don. Shane, thanks for coming here, installing this, setting it up, dropping the knowledge on this product. Guys, if you like this video, please hit the thumb up, hit the subscribe button. Don't forget about our Patreon channel at patreon.com slash audiohawks. We appreciate your support. You get direct access to me if you want to suggest video topics. You got any questions about this subwoofer, put them down below. We're going to get him to answer it. He's the guy that designs it. He's the brains behind this product. I'm sure you guys have lots of questions we didn't cover in this video. Shane, I just volunteered you for a lot of extra work. As you always do. Yes. <laughs> well, guys, that's a wrap. I hope you liked this video. And until next time, my friends, keep listening. It, we're aimed down now. Your <sighs> her heads are cut off. It zoomed it in more. Oh, it did. Oh. And I can't zoom it out any more than that. It's weird. I can. I can't get your whole head in. Nailed it. Nice.